I don't understand why an architect would now decide who hires an architect. I mean, he has a point here. It depends on the architect, though. You know, some do care, some do put in the effort. No, none of this was intentional by the individual. Even on the most base level, I said every building is ugly. Have you noticed that every new building is ugly? <laughs> it's ugly. Just goes, yeah, it's all the same glass, big square, ugly building. In the 1400s, we built these ornate, gorgeous buildings. And now everything's ugly. Why is that? He does have a point here. You know, you look at the buildings back from, he mentions 1800s, but you go further back, 1600s, 1200s, back to Roman Empire times. You look at the buildings and you can just tell that the whole human society was on a completely different level than we are today. They had a, such a deeper and different understanding of what architecture is and what buildings are. And it just shows like, you can look at the monuments, you can look at the Roman Greek, Anglo-Saxon, the Middle East, all this architecture from that period, it just is uncomparable to the type of BS that we're making today. And I've talked a lot about this in previous videos, but you know, I personally think it's from the loss of God within the architecture. But you know, let's continue watching and see what um, Andrew says about this. And well, I'll tell you why it is. It's because they don't want you to have any intrinsic attachment to a specific place. If, if all the buildings are beautiful in a specific town, you have intrinsic attachment to that town. You care about that town. You want good things for that town. You'll protect that town. You'll defend that town. What, what is that? That's a barrier. That's a parameter. If everything looks the same all the time, you'll just move. Who cares? Oh, they've messed up San Fran. Who cares? I'll just move somewhere else. I'll just move somewhere else. It's all the same. Globalism doesn't matter. It's all the same. Buildings in Berlin and New York, they all look the same. He's right here. It goes into a kind of more scientific um, reason for this, you know, that things that are beautiful, uh, things that you are attached to, things that you want to defend. And, you know, he's talking about the globalist movement here and that we want to detach society from their surroundings and destroy their beliefs so that no one cares about where they're living anymore and essentially just make people depressed and detached from themselves and their communities and therefore making them easier to manipulate. Well, yes, I do agree that they are doing this and it is a huge ploy in all these aspects within our lives that are creating this. But, you know, it's not designers, architects, and builders specifically. There's no architects sitting that are secretly in sort of cahoots with the uh, world organization or whatever the globalist thing. We're not intentionally separating buildings from God or taking less care in the design of buildings. It simply comes down just to that it's more cost efficient and clients not gonna pay for the extra time it takes for architects to design more. We're going to choose probably the cheaper um, laborers and contractors. And you know, there simply are no labor companies that say we're going to build buildings that are equivalent to the buildings of back in the 1700s and stuff. You know, contractors are going to come in, they're going to follow the code. They're just going to build what they build, not giving them shit or anything. It's just how the industry is now. And no one's led a new movement to bring back these kind of ancient buildings and the construction because mostly because of the economy, just no client wants to pay for it. No architect is going to get uh, get commissioned to spend like 10 years designing one building and no contractors or laborers are going to put their entire lives purpose and dedication into this because they're simply not getting paid for it. Um, there's so many factors that contribute to this, but yes, I agree that it could be part or it is part of this bigger underlying reason of trying to detach people from their surroundings, destroy the communities by not designing beautiful buildings, by not putting intricate details. You know, God is no longer in the details of these buildings. They used to say, um, one of these architects, God is in the, in the details. I can't remember his name. It was an architect that said that, but I believe that God is no longer in the details. That's why these buildings are so boring and mundane. Andrew talks about if you blew up the town center, you blew up the library, would anyone care? Like, no, they wouldn't because it's just another building to them. And that's crazy to think about that if you live in a house that's just another building and you don't even care where you live, you don't care about your community, you don't care about anything that's gonna have an effect on you and lead you to becoming more depressed, more detached. You know, I believe it's good not to be attached to anything in life because everything fades, everything will eventually wither away. Even these ancient buildings that were built in the image of God, they will still wither away. However, if you're living in these communities, you know, you wanna be attached to your community still. You wanna be attached to where you live. You wanna you wanna want to defend where you live. You wanna want to live where you live. We no longer want that anymore. So this is what Andrew's getting at. However, there are just so many factors in that you can't just say, yep, we'll just boom, do this. And now we've fixed the problem. But this is definitely a very good point. Let's continue to see what he has to say. Where's all the beauty gone? When there's beauty, 
You have an attachment to that beauty. They want to remove all your attachments from everything. That's pretty much what I was, was getting at just then. So let's continue watching. Even now, when they try and psyop you into, let's say, the, the way that models all look different than they used to before, right? Models all look different. Victoria's Secret. Yeah, and I was arguing this point. And someone was saying, oh, but that's because you have Euro Eurocentric beauty standards. I said, no. I'm going to correct you because I know you think you sound smart using the word Eurocentric. And I'm going to correct you because you're a dumbass. <laughs> Let me tell you what beauty standards are. Beauty standards, by definition, for something to be beautiful, has to at least be unique. If everything is beautiful, then it's not beautiful. If everything's beautiful, then it's standardized. For you to take a model who looks the way they look without any effort at all, and they look like most out of shape, uninteresting people on the street, you cannot call that beautiful because it's standardized. You can see it everywhere. Beauty means it must have been difficult to obtain. Whether it's a building, it's difficult to make because it's ornate, or a woman who's trained really hard to have a beautiful figure, that is difficult. Difficulty and beauty are linked. You can't have beauty without difficulty. You cannot show me another model and tell me that my Eurocentric beauty standards are saying she isn't hot, because that's not why. She isn't hot because she's made no effort. She hasn't tried. That's why. So he, he's trying to make the comparison, or he is making the comparison that things that are beautiful are hard to obtain. Now, can't really compare buildings to women I mean, these are rather different things, I would say. But what you're saying that if something's beautiful, it's hard to obtain. Now, I kind of have an objection to this argument because in his specific argument here, I could argue that, well, some women are just beautiful even without actually trying or without without training. You know, not, not every model is like training seven days a week or whatever. But so that argument is a little bit skewed there. But, you know, I get the point. So and when it relates to architecture, I would agree that, yes, very rarely are you going to just quickly make a building or just quickly make something and kind of rustle it together in a few weeks, a few months even, and then expect it to be something magnificent and beautiful that people are gonna like be in awe at and say, whoa, this is amazing. Like, look at what you know. Anything that is beautiful, that is created throughout history, you know, you got statues by like, um, I don't know the name of these people, but the Greek, the Greek people making the statues, like Michelangelo, I think. You know, you can tell that these statues that they make, you've probably seen pictures of them. Some esoteric page is always reposting it on Twitter or whatever. But you can tell that the artist took years and years of dedication to build something like this or even relating back to architecture, these churches, these cathedrals in the Saxon era, or even further back in the Greek era, these temples, you can tell that it was made by thousands of thousands of people and laborers, all, you know, dedicating their entire life's purpose to creating these things. And that's what makes it beautiful. And that's a lot is what is being lost in today of architecture that no longer are things uniquely designed or curated or you know no one is entering these designs with the bigger purpose in mind and especially a lot of these buildings today are not attached to god and there is kind of no higher purpose in these buildings that we're making they're simply buildings to give a roof and kind of fulfill this modernist architecture criteria you tick the box of it's got big wide glass it's got the minimalistic stainless steel look Tick, 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 looks all is good, build it, commission it, follow the standards and you're done. And those are the buildings that we're seeing today. So yeah, here's a point there, let's continue watching. And they're doing this with everything. Everything is ugly, nothing has a standard, nobody has to try for anything, no parameter, no baseline belief of what's true and what's false. Everything's subjective, your truth. No, there's the truth. There's no such thing as your truth. And this is an attack on every single level. They're assaulting us from everywhere, even the buildings they build are assaulting you so you can't even just drive through a town and go, wow, look how much energy has been put into this place. I love this place. I will not allow them to do it to this place. Now it's just like, ah, we can move there. Ah, let's move there. It's all the same anyway. It's all a Starbucks on the corner and a 7-Eleven. Who cares? It's all the same. Why fight? Why fight for any of it? There's a good sentence he actually says here that I am going to kind of dissect where he says, you go through a town and you can tell that no energy has been put in. I believe that when you create something, you're tapping into a different kind of plane of this creation. It's gonna sound really like in the clouds, kind of spacey vibe, you know. But I truly believe that when you create something, you're tapping into a different plane of existence, which is the energy of like creation. When you create something, you, you, you think you're getting just ideas from your head you're putting in, but I believe that there's a, a whole plane of creation that you tap into and you put this energy into what you're making. And I believe that the ancient Romans, the Greeks, they were far more in tune with this idea than we are today. That, you know, say a, a Greek man was designing a temple. 
He was spending consistently hours and hours and hours every day in this mindset, in this kind of level of thinking of channeling nature's creation into their buildings. And you see this is prevalent within the temples. You've got things like Fibonacci ratio, golden ratio, all these principles that of nature's design are prevalent within these buildings. Now today, depends on what architecture firm you're at. Some firms care more about the essence of design where but you see it in modern apartment buildings that they've just gotten typical plans, details, whatever. They haven't even thought about unique design. They just say floors, modernistic proportions that are existing, da, 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 put that on, build it, done. The level of energy that's been put into the building is prevalent really. And so he talks about you drive through a city and you can just see that there is no energy put into this. You cannot feel the energy of the buildings. I stand in front, you know, we have a in Sydney here, there's a cathedral that was built in the 17 or 1800s. And the energy that was put into the creation of the building still lasts today because I stand in front of the building and you look up at the buttresses pointing out with the cross at the top and it's, you know, this really tall, extravagant building. You stand at the bottom and you look up. You just feel this sense of awe and you can feel the energy that was put into the creation of this building. And it's not simply just a thing of height. I stand in front of a modern skyscraper in the city and I don't feel the same thing, even though it's twice as tall as this cathedral. I stand, I look up and you just go, yeah, I mean, it was built by a crane. And again, I'm, I'm not bashing the, the labor of the people because, you know, it's easy to not be in the construction industry and just say, yeah, they're not caring. Like, it, I do not at all think it's the fault of the laborers. In fact, I commend laborers and construction workers so much that I believe that they should be getting paid as much as athletes and, you know, modern, you know, these rappers and modern music people. They're getting paid millions, millions and millions. I believe that our contractors and laborers should be, you know, receiving the same pay. So I really empathize with them. I'm not at all bashing them but i'm just saying the amount of energy put into these buildings you can just see the contrast between buildings of today compared to buildings of you know way back then so that's where i agree with him on that point this is it's all done purposefully i'm telling you there's they call me a conspiracy theorist call me crazy i don't understand why an architect would now decide who hires an architect i'm going to build a building let me hire an architect i mean he has a point here I was just talking about this, like, yes. But it depends on it depends on the architect, though. You know, some do care, some do put in the effort. But then again, there are those companies that are just checking the boxes. Oh, it's sustainable. Oh, we got the big glass. We got the stainless steel. We got the fake stone tiles. Yep, it's good to go, you know. There is a difference between firms that care and, and those that don't care. To come up with the same sketch of the same bullshit building, which is already existing everywhere. How much did I pay him? Yeah, what we're gonna do is we build a skyscraper made of grass that looks like every other one. Is that it? We did all this 600 years ago. We built cathedrals and now we build this crap? Why? Everything is on purpose. It's all a psyop. It's all a psyop. Yeah, I'm gonna agree that yes, it is all on purpose, but it's not the result. I say it's the result of the culture and the world that we're living in that has guided this. No one has intentionally done away with these old design principles. It wasn't intentional by any architect or board. And I, someone called me crazy because I pointed out that this is no longer prevalent within the whole architectural process of today. And someone thought that I was stating that, you know, we're all getting together at the city council meetings saying, yeah, we gotta purposely make people detach from where they live. Like, no, none of this was intentional by the individual. It's just a result of where the culture has shifted and things throughout history that have led to this happening. Now we've got to start to ask ourselves, how do we bring these ancient principles back? Can we bring them back? A lot of people uh, that follow God think we're in the end times. So why even bother bringing it back? I don't even care about the buildings of today. I know a lot of Christians or Muslims will say we are in the end times and that I don't even care about the buildings anymore Let's just it's gonna get destroyed soon anyway So but I think that is wrong I think that we should bring back this kind of care in buildings the energy put into the buildings We should bring it back But then again, there are so many things in society that are in the way of this You know the whole architecture and beauty thing is literally one tiny little portion of this huge bigger picture going on I could talk you know for hours and hours about these deeper conspiracies that Andrew talks about and if you, if you watch him you probably know of the things he talks about and what's happening in society so I'm just gonna leave it at that that architecture and this whole beauty thing is one really small detail but it is contributing to the rest of this and we gotta start asking ourselves what can be done to bring these things back but yeah so that's my that's my take on it um, let me know if you agree let me know if you think I'm crazy in the comments either way 
Thank you for watching and yeah.